What's happening guys? Welcome back. So, I've got a bed head. It's very, very early in the morning. It's five o'clock. Um, yeah, we're heading over to see the guys at Lowdown Transporters. Just gonna have a quick cup of tea. Trying to be quiet because I'll be still asleep. Um, dogs are stirring, so I'll let them out for a wee in a minute. And she'll give you a quick sneak peek of the other project that I've been on, which has been run about in the house. And anyone that's watched the other channel, these are the three bedrooms that were full of dog excrement and all sorts. We've made it into this lot. There will be an update video on that coming soon. I know I keep promising it, but we're just trying to get to a point and then we'll film another video. Right, I'll get this drunk, get the dogs out for a wee. We'll get a van sorted, it's pitch black outside, so I'm not gonna be able to do any filming until it starts to get a little bit lighter. So we'll get in the van, finish this, get in the van. We'll get on the way and I shall see you in a little bit. Here we are then, daylight. So I changed the heat resistor. And it's done what I wanted it to do, it's fixed the issue. So before it was only working on three and four nails, now it works on one, two, three, and four. Um, super simple, I'll show you it when we get there, or I'll show you it in a little bit in the video, um, because it was dark and we couldn't get the torch working. Super simple, two six mil bulbs, one clip, 30 second job, and it sorts the issue out. Traveling down has been actually quite nice, I expected it to be traffic and a nightmare being as it's Friday, uh, and we're going on the A14, which is notoriously bad. Um, Traffic was heavy, but it's not been too bad. We haven't stopped until we just got on, just before we got off the A11. Uh, and we're now in the little sort of A roads down to low down transporters. So I should see you when we get there. We'll show you around um, what they've got, got cool stuff, uh, and speak to the guys and get started on this. I imagine it's going to be quite awkward because I, even though they have got a YouTube channel and they film and they do all of that lot, I really find it awkward talking to the camera in front of people, even that's what I do for a living, essentially. Anyway, see you when we get there, get on with banging this van. And here we are at the world famous Lowdown Transporters, so van is outside. Chris's van's there, Jack's Ranger, Body Drop Ranger. Damn cool. So, plan, I don't know really. It's with, I've been here for what, 40 minutes and we've so far stood around, drank tea, talked. Chris tried to climb the wall because apparently Chris reckons he can climb that wall and climb in that vent, which went really well. Anyway, then don't know where they've gone. I don't know how this video is going to go. Let's get uh, get the van in, get it on the lift. van is up on the lift and the arch gap's even bigger and we've been through me and chris has just been through and unboxed all of that lot which looks absolutely amazing so we've got solo air struts and bags um i've been out and bought some new drive shafts like i said because the there's a click in from the front so we might as well bang some new drive shafts on it uh so uh, solo sh silent compressors that are going to go underneath solo tank I bought some new lower arms as well, new ball joints, or I've not bought, I've been given, um, because the rubbers have gone and there's a horrendous knock on them. There's some drop links on here, down there as well. They're solo drop links to go with this kit. And the wiring loom airline for the Airlift 3H management, digital management. One of my big bugbears, and that is with me in the workshop as well, is the amount of stuff that I buy or get given and get sent is packaging. All of that cardboard there, 
has come from that little lot there. It's recyclable and we will be recycling it. But yeah, for some reason, it really winds me up the amount of packaging that you get. Right, day is getting on and we really haven't really done a lot yet because we just keep talking and catching up because I've not seen them for so long. So let's get on. We're getting all of this lot stripped off this van. There's Gareth Hill. So Dan's getting on with all the struts and stuff at the minute. So I am going to be getting on with the management side of things. So there's, we tend to get everything prepared, ready to go, first of all, before you even touch the van with it. So first up, I have got the tank. Um, so just quickly tap the holes out on these because you often get a bit of crap in them. Um, so just tap the holes out in them um, and put the fittings in. So we've got a drain at the bottom, um, bung in each end. And then this side, we've got two 3 8 fittings. One will go to the manifold and the other one will be for the two compressors because we tee them both together because the compressors come out in quarter inch. So they could be teed then into a single bit of three eighth and then go there then and you've only got one line to run back. So you notice there on one side only and the other side has got no fittings. Uh, that's because the tank is gonna come up in uh, this void here um, and there's obviously an exhaust one side. So then the fittings will come out on this side so that keep any heat away from those fittings. So that's that done. Um, I shall now move on to sorting the compressors out. So this is how the compressor turns up. Um, you see the springs are up on the top. Um, so attached, three eight, push to connect on there, filters on. The feet, we well, pull these rubbers out and flip them round. See the larger side and the spring is on this side. So flip them around because these are going up underneath the van like that. So the springs are there to take up the slack. Um, so they go on this side. So it's flipped all them round. Uh, we also span this foot round to the inside. Just makes that a little bit shorter. Makes it a bit easier to find a place to screw your holes and mount everything inside. So next up is management. So this <clears throat> we use when we install these, a threaded manifold so that we can put elbows into there so that when it goes up underneath the van, it's roughly in that area, the airlines can then go off and onto the chassis. So just get all that assembled now. So that's those bits all assembled. So that's your water trap. So that's gonna go in between the tank and the manifolds to try and prevent any moisture getting into this valve block. Uh, this is a blow off valve which will go on the drain line and we'll put an inflation valve at the end of the drain line um, so that any moisture at the tank can be drained either by these. But this will also, it's just a safety precaution at 200 PSI, this will open up. So if for some reason the compressors carry on running when they shouldn't, uh, that will blow off instead of the tank blowing up. Um, so yeah, manifold, this will all become a bit more um, apparent in a little while when we get it mounted up. But yeah, so we've screwed, we screw these ones in instead of usually these come with the push to connect fittings straight out of these. But we use the threaded ones so we can come out at an angle. But as you can see, so that was the exhaust, that one's the one that goes out, that was tank. Uh, so that one goes to the tank, that one. Then we've got front left, front right, rear left, rear right. So, and that is the brains of it all. So next up, I just need to mess with the loom a bit. So this is the airlift loom, which comes with it. So that obviously works, but we need to put a second compressor loom into that. So we need to run a second relay, um, second load of wires. So, and we'll just assemble that how we want to. I mean, it is obviously plug and play, but we mess around with it a little bit for fitting it onto the van. So we shall get onto that now. Damn. Oh. I've got all of the kit out. Every single bit of kit that's in the toolbox is now out and just around the workshop, just in case you need it. Yeah, cheers, pal. All right. So I'll also, I'll probably build these struts up in a moment. I mean, they're, they're already built up, obviously, but we've just got to put lead lines into them and fittings and stuff in them. Um, because Dan's been cracking on and he's got his arms and stuff off. Makes Do it we... easy for changing the struts to take the hub and the whole strut assembly off because trying to get a standard strut out of the hub, many difficulties. It's too long, you can't, yeah. Take the hub off, if you can do it, take the hub off, it's easier. It's full of we just take it off. Ah. 
Right, we've made a bit of progress. So, Chris, obviously, as you've been seeing, has been focusing on getting all the air ride stuff sorted. I've got the new lower arms uh, and drive shafts to fit. So, we've taken the full assembly out of the van um, just to, for ease of everything and so I can get the drive shafts out. I've changed the stub shaft as well, which is in there, which is the most common thing that goes on them and wears. And look in at this one. It is really, oh, where's the camera? Really, really worn. It'll focus. Really worn. So that should have a flat on the top of it. I'll put the other one in there. Anyway, that's worn. So we've changed that one bolt in the middle, changed the seals, um, do the bolt back up. Pretty easy, to be fair. Um, what I'm going to do now is jump on and get all the arch liners and the under trays off so that we can start running lines, etc., for the exciting bit of the air ride. So we have got all these plastics off now. So I've just got all the holes drilled up for the tank and just put the riv nuts in there, get some hoof on there. So they don't rust away. Same with the compressor ones. So yeah, as you can see under here, compressors will go up under here. Tank at the back here. So that was quite fun getting all the plastics off, wasn't it, Dan? That was great fun. It's not, it's a very clean van underneath. There's no rust on it at all. Yeah, every single screw that holds the plastics on are all rotted and arrested. Yeah, rotted heads have gone, trying to get sockets on, nightmare, but they're off now. We've just got to try and get it all back on after. Yeah, I think we'll, uh, we'll put some new screws and stuff in, <laughs> maybe. So I've stripped all the hubs down, got the struts out of the hub, which um, you can do a couple of different ways. You've obviously got two pin a pinch bolt running through there like that, undo them, and then you've got to get the strut out of the hub now this is a t26 t28 and t30 style where it slides in t32 is different that just clamps on in a different way it doesn't actually go into a sleeve now you want to use something like this which is like a hub splitter or a i don't even know what it's called but basically you put that in there turn it and it opens that slit so that you can get the shock out or you use uh the way that i normally do it is uh just a chisel just knock a chisel in it'll open it up and the strut will slide out. So the thing that we need to do now, if you look in here, there's a lip at the bottom here. You can see on it, this lip down here. We want to take that off, which is the hub mod, which we covered in the first T5 series we did on the channel, um, which basically allows you to send the strut through the hub to effectively, well, you lower the vehicle a little bit more, you're getting a few more mils. So what I've done is I've gone through and cut through there with a 57 mil hole saw on a drill, whatever I've done with it. So just a 57 mil hole saw, and then go back in with a die grinder and a rasp just to take the rest of the lip off so that the strut will slide all the way through and give us the extra lows. So we've done that one with the drill, we'll do this one with the drill, and then we'll get the find the grinder, die grinder, and we'll grind the rest of the lip off. It's kind of taken over Dan's video with this one. <laughs> And I, <laughs> I am the commentator. I am the commentator, the man with the mullet. He knows. Um, well, I'm not going to have my comment bothered. Right, so tank up. Um, put the drain in, so that comes along. There's that blow-off valve. So these have got to be mounted either horizontally or upwards, because if they're mounted down, the moisture will sit in, and you can see the little hole in it. Um, they end up getting blocked and then they, they start to deteriorate and leak. Um, so that then comes off through this plastic, which we then have tyre inflation valves in the back there. So that can then, you can use that to drain the tank or um, if for some reason the compressors fail, which is highly unlikely, you can use a normal compressor just to pump it up. So they're up. Compressors are now up in place. Chucked a nice, can't really see. Had a few sheets of dodo mat here already. Um, so chucked a bit of extra dodo mat in there just to quiet them down even, even more, even though Dan's already dodo mat. Got his mat, floor. got dodo mat mad inside. So down dodo mat mad underneath as well, now? Yeah. Um, all helps. What are you up to? Uh, I'm just gonna start getting all the front end back together. So all the new lower arms on the new ball joints, uh, new drive shafts in. Uh, and then we'll get the hub modded hubs back on and we can then start thinking about putting the struts on. 
Nice. Cool, backed up. Next thing to do is the new strut. We need to put the rubber top mount that came off the van on. Now, this hasn't been done very well. You're supposed to put T6 uh, of these rubbers on because on it here, where's the camera? On it here, there's a piece of rubber that sticks down further. I've cut them down because I didn't get any T6 ones. Um, otherwise, when you put it on and it sits on there, it'll rub on the top of that and it'll squeak and be very annoying. Other thing, when you get a set of struts for a T5 specifically, they'll come with a nut on the top like that. And you want to take that nut and do that with it because you need to put that rubber on there and you need to use this which comes off the original strut so on the original strut you've got the spring and everything then you've got all the bearing and then you've got this rubber um so undo that very carefully because there's a lot of tension on that spring and put that on there these nuts these nuts these nuts and then yeah do that one up um nice and tight or oh, nip it up on there and then basically what that does that goes through the body of the van there there's another rubber above it and it, this gives the other piece sits on top of that and it gives it the right amount of tension if you like so that everything grips and holds where it needs to do if you used the other nut for example one like this it is a hell of a lot thinner and all you're going to do is just crush everything together and everything's not moving in the correct way um, and it's just not going to work properly so make sure that you fit that nut on so We'll nip that up, get the GoPro on, and we'll get these in the van. Right, chamber pots. <laughs> so, <laughs> we are now going to mount the man food. Uh, normally, we would mount it on this driver's side up hither. But I'm awkward. But Dan's awkward, he's going to put a diesel heater in, a plain R diesel heater. But the plain R diesel heater mounts around here as well, so it's going to be right in the way. So, we're going to have to go this side, but there's a diesel cooler. Um, so we're going to go up there. So the handy thing with the airlift manifolds is on the inside of the back of them, oh, they are threaded. So what we shall do is we're going to draw some holes through here. Now the steps out, manifold will go on the other side and we'll just bolt straight through. So it's a lot easier because we haven't got to try and get a drill bit up the other side or tech screws or anything like that. Dan, what are you doing Dan? I am trying to get the strut sitting in the right place so that because of the hood mod, it can obviously go through. So I'm trying to get the strut in about the right place um, as far down so that the wheel is as far up as it will go. I think it's there. Might nice. be a little bit too low. A little bit too low? Maybe. Well, there isn't such a thing uh, as too low, but with the mods that this body will have, it might not. I don't know. We'll see. We'll have a go. Well, we'll cut it up and we'll make it work. So, yeah, there's the struts all installed to look very pretty. There it is. Very good, so, very nice. Right, let's get a loom on. There we go. Front struts are in both sides. They can be, and these were, a bit of a pain to get them in um, through the hub uh, because it was gripping or whatever. So a little bit of copper slick. And um, open this up with, oh, open this up again with the chisel. A bit of moving about, a few hits with the hammer and it went in. Um, we've hub modded it as well. So just off the... Uh, CV boot um, and it's all the way through that should get us so that we're just about tucking the wheel not the tyre so hopefully it's going to sit where we want if not we could have to have a bit of a plate and adjustment with it but it's a starting point so we can get it all on working and then get it on the ground and do a bit of fine tuning afterwards so the next thing that I'm going to do Chris is doing all the electrics and the complicated bits we're going to get the rear struts off the rear springs out and then we've got to cut the um bump stop tubes down um, so they can get maximum loads. We also need to relocate the ABS line because at the minute it runs over the top of the rear arm and we need to bring it so it runs around the side because if it stayed on top, it'd get pinched by the chassis leg. So, so you can see now why we put the elbow manifold in because we're gonna come off of those and obviously secure them onto the chassis. So they sort of come out nice and height. To work with whereas if they were straight down we'd have to somehow loop up to try and get the pipes in nice and straight but there's not really a lot of room with the diesel cooler underneath so that's in there now so we shall work on those airlines welcome back chamber pots <laughs>
<laughs> Sorry. Um, right, so while Stan's been around the struts, I, so that manifold is mounted up there. I've started running the lines round as you can see, coming this way. I dropped the tank down. So just quickly, you know, the rear bags aren't ready to go on yet. Um, ran the rear lines and everything just so whilst the tank's down, I can get them up. So then whip over and come. So this is long wheelbase. So where are we? There's a the tank. Coming back, following the brake lines up over. So I've got the one from the manifold into the, that water trap, into the tank, tank up and over. Um, where am I? Over up to here. So here's where the two compressors tee off of each other and run along this chassis. So normally, because the manifold would be over here, we'd run all of the lines along here. So we'd P-clip the compressor line to the tank, we'd P-clip the line from the manifold back to the tank, and then the rear air lines we'd just cable tie to them. So we use the first two lines um, to secure everything. Oh, very neat. You don't do a bad job, do you? Uh, sometimes. So yeah, so that's the tank technically all sealed up now um, all ports on that are connected so now i'm going to jump onto the wire and loom get all that run relays compressors all that wire and done um whilst dan finishes up those front bags and stuff and then i can then get the front lines to them and all connected so i just built up the relay <clears throat> um to take the second compressor harness and just make a few little shortens and adjustments that we we do but the joy with the airlift stuff is it's all basically plug and play. Um, the wiring room looks scary, but it's not. So I've done it. So there's, there's our two lives, which will just go to the battery. Um, obviously you've got a couple of relays for the compressors. Got two lots of wiring, obviously one for each compressor. Um, then you've got the plug, which goes to the manifold. These are all the height sensor plugs. Earths to the chassis. And then these two wires here is just one for the controller and one for the ignition light. So that's it. I've messed around and, and made this just slightly different and shorter and stuff like that in certain ways. <clears throat> um, but the joy of airlift is you don't have to do any of that. You could literally get it out the box and just plug it in. Um, maybe a little bit untidy, a little bit long here, a little bit short there, but you'll make it work. Um, so yeah, that's now ready to go on. So it's now gone dark, Ooh. but we're trying to get this done within like a day or two. So, you know, Dan doesn't have to hang around here too long. So we're going to be having a late one tonight. So we're going to go have dinner in a little while. But, <clears throat> so I have just, when I last left you, I started the wiring loom. So that's all up now. So we've got obviously from the compressors up, over. So they then come down obviously into the rest of the loom. Um, the main power cables go off up to the battery following the brake lines. Um, obviously goes over, plugs into the manifold there, swoops around. The relays are up there. Uh, the plugs for the height sensors are up here. Then the cables that need to go up into the cab follow that brake line over, clipped. And then a uh, hole with a grommet put through into the side step. So then they'll go from in the side step up and under the cab mat and up into the dash. Um, whilst that was done, Dan obviously finished up the struts. So the lines have been ran. So again, one loops around up to that one and then up and over and into this one. So we've connected it about here. Uh, we try and put P-clips kind of either side of these connections so that they can't sort of wobble around. Um, a little bit of a loop in the leader line because obviously when you air out, that strut's going to go up. So there needs to be a bit of slack on there to be able to go up with it. Dan, what have you been up to, my friend? Uh, just sat around drinking tea, some Bombay mix, you know, just chilling out. I mean, he's not, he's not actually lying there with Bombay mix then. <laughs> um, we sorted out the rear, so cut down the bump stop on the bottom, cut down the bump stop on the top and primed and painted those. Um, when you do that, there's a little knobble on here which throws people off even when they fit coilovers, that there's a little knobble on here and people think that when they fit coilovers or the bags, it wobbles a bit. You have to just grind that flat um, so that everything will fit. So we've done them. Um, and then, have you explained about the cutting that we've no, just done? Yet. This is cutting 
for the rear arm. So this doesn't have to be done, but we do it just gets the rear just that little bit lower. So we notch out just across here, just to give that shock a little bit more travel to come up um, and <clears throat> out on this corner. So it gives that arm more room to go up and the brake line comes up around here. So it gives that a bit more clearance so you don't crush that. Uh, Dan's also moved these ABS lines. So originally these are on the top. So they just popped out and then six mil holes drilled into the side of the arm so that they can clip in there. So again, you don't crush your ABS cable on there and throw up loads of warning lights. And that's what we've done so far. Very good, very nice. So moving on, uh, Dan's gonna get the bags and the shocks, the shocks back the on the rear. Uh, the rear airlines, as I said, are already here, they're already ran, so they can all be plugged in. Front lines are all plugged in, looms all done. Um, so I don't know, when we come back from dinner, we may either finish, I think we'll probably finish all the connections, won't we, I suppose. Yeah. Finish, do the control amount, mount that in the door, if connect the ignition it, live, down, connect the lives at the battery, which will mean then, technically, the van is bagged on airlift 3P. So that'll be, that'll be able to turn on, you'll be able to use that on the pressure-based system, use the presets for the pressure-based system. Um, but obviously, Dan's going for 3H, so we haven't actually spoke about this yet. So I'll quickly pull that over. So as I said, as, as the system is now, that would be airlift 3P. So you'd have all the same functions on your controller you'll have when the screen lights up it'll tell you what the pressures are in the corners um you'll you've got preset drive heights here so you save the heights of the van based on the pressure um and so when you want to get in and drive you lift, press double tap the button that lift up to say a normal drive height or a high drive height or a low drive height there's your air out button um then you've got your individual corners as well so that'll all work on pressure but the the issue is with pressure-based systems, if the weight changes massively, so for example, you put a trailer on the back, which is what Dan is going to do, then the rear will sit down like it would if it was on springs, the weight of the van will then kick down. So you'd have to then press the rear buttons and add extra pressure into the rear, um, which is absolutely fine if you know what you're doing and that's, that's no issue. But if you add height sensors, which then turn this into LF3P, these height sensors will go, uh, 3H, sorry. These height sensors will then be wired into the system, recalibrate it differently. These will be on a fixed point of the chassis. These will then drop down to the moving points, like the, the lower arms. Um, and then when you air out, obviously it will come up. And when you lift up, that will come down. That will send a resistance reading to that. So then it bases all of the heights on presets on height so when you save them if dan or when dan then loads his trailer on the system will pick that up automatically because the height sensor which is supposed to be there for example will be slightly there the system will then pick that up and add the extra pressure in and bring that up to the height that it needs to be so it'll never sit ass down um, it'll always automatically bring that up but these are a bit of a fiddle so we're probably going to save them for tomorrow when we're fresh head um and had some sleep right end up wandering down the pub get some to eat we're all full and ready to carry on and i'm absolutely full for it and we're getting some looks in the pub because i think i was so dirty so what i'm going to move on to now is chucking the rear bags in place with all the cut down rear end we'll get the shocks on and then we will get the lines which chris has put in plugged into it so that means that the rear is then essentially done for going up and down purposes. So my next task whilst Dan's getting on with that is I'm going to make a control amount. Um, I haven't actually got the materials that I wanted to do this. I ran out of 9mm MDF and forgot to order some. So I'm going to make this work. Dan will probably redo it because he's a carpenter. A carpenter? I wasn't a carpenter, I was a joiner. So he'll probably think that what I do is no good um so what we'll do on this is a template for the top of the door card that top pocket <clears throat> so because this is like 20 md 20 mil mdf so we'll cut this out um and then we'll cut out then a hole in it for the controller kind of like so 
We'll cut that out, then I'll cut a bit of 9mm ply to stick underneath that, and then a little square to go into the hole that's in there to bring the controller back up kind of flush with this. Trim that in the door card stuff that Dan's got. A um, couple of little feet, put it in. Like I said, Dan will probably redo it because I'm not a carpenter. He is. He'll probably look at that and go, what the hell is that, Chris? Yeah, so, but we need to get it done anyway. So if I do it, then at least he's got then a piece of wood to use as a template if he wants to remake it and make it better, or, you know, whatever carpenters do. So we'll crack on with that. So that is that. I want to control them out. We've trimmed it in just uh, grey or anthracite carpet because Dan forgot to bring some material with him that matches his door cards. So we we're running well here. So yeah, it was just a bit of 20mm MDF with the cut out for the controller, then a bit of 9mm, put a little bit of 9mm packer in there to bring that up level. Uh, what's that? Another bit of 20mm, another bit of 9mm. Just all just super glued together. Hole through there for the cable. So that will go into the door card. So nice, quick, easy controller mount. Ready to go in. So it's now about nine o'clock, first evening. Uh, so I've just finished off the battery connections. So as I said earlier, the loom for the, these just follow the brake lines up basically. Bring them up round behind this plastic round. Sort of clip it to that. Um, all connected up nicely fuses in there, 30 amp fuses. So these are separate, so basically the compressors are on a fuse each. So if for one reason or the other, a compressor ever gives up the ghost and at least it'll only pop one fuse. Won't leave stranded, he'll have another fuse going. So, Daniel. Let's look around. What have you just done? You've just done. Uh, uh, Ignition feed. Ignition live, so just off the back, the headlight switch on an early T5, it's like the big yellow and black, or big black and yellow wire. Um, obviously, if you're doing any other van, then, you know, get your tester out and just figure out what's going on. So the wires come up from that step, like I said, that doesn't get crushed, they do go nicely in there. in there. Void there, so they come up and obviously up through. Um, cable through the door card, hole through. There's my little controller mount, nice. Dan, do you want to flip the ignition on so we see if it works? Hey, yeah, so both compressors are working. Let's see, tank pressure's now rising. That noise, the noise, that, that noise is the most irritating. Why would the parking sensors be just on a permanent live, not on the reverse switch? So annoying. <laughs> and then on a fitting, you can't get undone. Would you like a wire cutter? <laughs> I'll be sat all morning editing the video and it ended up getting quite long. The video ended up nearly an hour long, so I've decided to split it into two episodes, but don't worry, episode two is now up and ready to view. If you click the link here, it will take you over to that video where we are on day two of fitting the Air Eye to the C5.